Kaya Chaksurun Militanina Tesmai Shri Gurave Namaha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutale Shri Mati Bhakti Vedanta Swamini Namine Namaste Sarasati Devi Gauravani Precharine Nirvisesha Shanyavadi Paschatya Deshatarine Vancha Kaupata Rupyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhayevacha Patitanam Pavanebhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadha Shri Vasati Gaur Bhakta Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So we're on Mantra 13 of Sri Ishopanishad. Anya Devahu Sambhavad Anyad Ahur Asambhavat Iti Sushrur Madhiranam Yenastad Vishak Chakshare It is said that one result is obtained by worshipping the supreme cause of all causes and that another result is obtained by worshipping what is not supreme. All this is heard from the undisturbed authorities who clearly explained it. แปลได้กล่าวไว้ว่าผลลัพธ์หนึ่งได้รับจากการบูชาแหล่งคุณสูงสุดของแหล่งกำเนิดทั้งปวงและอีกผลลัพธ์หนึ่งได้รับจากการ
จำมาถึงกฤษณาที่พระตั้งหนักของพระองค์ในท้องฟ้าทิพย์ So here also in this Ishopanishad mantra the same thing is said The same point is made that one gets different results by different methods of worship. If we worship the Supreme Lord, we will be able to go to Him in His eternal abode in the spiritual sky. เลือกที่จะองค์พระบูชาองค์พระวาสูงสุดเนี่ยผลของมันก็คือเราจะได้กลับไปหาพระองค์ที่ท้องฟ้าทิพย์ And if we worship demigods like the sun god or the moon god then we can reach their planets แต่ถ้าเกิดเราเนี่ยบูชาเราเทวดาเช่นพระทิพย์หรือว่าพระจันทร์เราก็จะไปยังโลกของพวกท่าน And if we want to stay in this material world on our planet Earth, then we can stay here. But you have to remember, this planet is very miserable. There's a lot of horrible situations. แต่เราก็ต้องรู้และเข้าใจว่าโลกนี้เนี่ยมันเป็นโรคที่ไม่ค่อยน่าอยู่ขนาดนั้นมันเป็นโรคที่เต็มไปด้วยความทุกข์ And you have to put up with all the politics which goes on แต่เราก็ต้องต่อสู้กับสถานการณ์การเมืองที่มันเต็มที่มันรายรองตัวเราไปหมด So then Prabhupada makes the point that there's nowhere In any scripture where it says that you get the same goal by doing anything, that you can do whatever you like, and everybody gets the same thing. Some foolish people. They say it's all one. It's all the same. It doesn't matter who you worship. You all go to the same place. But it doesn't say that anywhere. We just quoted the Bhagavad Gita. Krishna says in the ninth chapter, "You worship the demigods, you go to the demigods. You worship the pitris, the forefathers, you go there." And you worship the ghosts. You go to the ghosts, and you be with the ghosts. But there are some very stupid people who try to say, "Oh, it's all one. It's all the same. It doesn't matter who you worship or what you worship. You get the same result." These people are fools. And these people, they they take the position of being a spiritual teacher. But they have no parampara. They have no connection with any disciplic succession. But they pre they present their teachings, and foolish people will believe them. So one who is a real spiritual master, who is actually a genuine teacher, he will not say things like that. ถ้าเกิดว่าใครเนี่ยเป็น
พระอาจารย์ที่แท้จริงเนี่ยเขาจะไม่พูดอะไรแบบนั้น He will not say that all the paths lead to the same goal. And he will not say that you, know, you can worship any way you like and get the same result. You, if you worship the demigods and you worship the supreme, there's a big difference. Just like if you purchase a ticket and you want to go to Calcutta, so you have to you will reach Calcutta if you get if you buy a ticket to go to Calcutta. You will reach Calcutta. You won't go to any other place. You bought the ticket and you get on the bus or you get on the train, and you go to Calcutta. You're going to come to Calcutta. You're not going to go any other place. You can't think, oh. I bought a ticket to Calcutta, but now I'm in Bombay. It wouldn't be like that. It's impossible. So all the paths. Some people, these so these so-called people, these so-called teachers who are who are not proper teachers, they will say, "Oh, it's all one. All the paths lead to the same." Goal. So these kind of people, they attract foolish people. Some foolish people who want to be cheated, they will find a cheater. And they have, they invent their own ways of spiritual knowledge. But it's all cheating. It's not valid. It's nonsense. And it's not supported by the Vedas. We have to get knowledge from the spiritual master who is in the line of the cyclic succession. Lord Krishna explains this very clearly in the Bhagavad Gita in the fourth chapter. Lord Krishna speaks about the importance of the disciplic succession. He says, Evam param para praptam emam rajashayo vidu ta kali neha mahata yoga nashta parantapa. The supreme science was thus received through the chain of disciplic succession, and the saintly kings understood it in that way. But in course of time, the succession was broken, and therefore the science, as it is, appears to be lost. So, when Lord Krishna was present on the planet, like 5,000 years ago, then at that time, he spoke this Bhagavad Gita. 
ื่อตอนนี้พระองค์เจ้าปริชนาเนี่ยทรงปรากฏในโลกใบนี้เมื่อประมาณ 5,000 ปีที่แล้วเนี่ยพระองค์ทรงตรัสพระควัตคีตา Actually, the Bhagavad Gita is eternal knowledge, and Krishna has spoken it many times before. พระวัตคีตาเนี่ยเป็นความรู้ที่เดิมแท้แล้วแล้วคริสตานเนี่ยก็เคยตรัสความรู้นี้เนี่ยก่อนหน้านี้แล้วด้วยซ้ำ But the most recent he spoke it was 5,000 years ago at Kurukshetra. แต่ว่าล่าสุดเนี่ยล่าสุดที่เพิ่งเกิดขึ้นก็คือประมาณเมื่อ 5,000 ปีที่แล้วที่สถานที่ศักดิ์สิทธิ์แห่งคุรุเชตร์ And Lord Krishna spoke about the importance of bhakti yoga. และคริสนาก็พูดถึงความสำคัญของบัคติโยกะ And Lord Krishna had to re-establish the disciplic succession. แล้วคริสนาเนี่ยก็เลยจะต้องมาสถาปนาหลักธรรมแห่งหลักธรรมปรัมปรานี้ขึ้นมาใหม่ Krishna spoke the knowledge to Arjuna, who was his very dear friend and devotee. Krishna ne song trap pakwar kita hai ka Arjuna ko thi pen sahai thi sanit kong krom la pen sao kong krom doi. So Krishna told Arjuna because he was his friend and his devotee, he could understand the Bhagavad Gita. Krishna ne sa bo ko Arjuna ko thi pen pen hong to nen wa pen pa wa thi nen pen pen. เป็นสหายของข้าแล้วก็เป็นเซาของข้าเพราะฉะนั้นแล้วเธอถึงสามารถเข้าใจสาแห่งพระกวดคิตานี้ได้ So if we want to understand the Bhagavad Gita we have to follow the same path as Arjuna ถ้าเกิดว่าเราเนี่ยอยากจะเข้าใจพระกวดคิตาเนี่ยเราก็ต้องเจริญรอยตามหลักการขององค์อัจฉริยะ We have to become a friend of Krishna and his devotee also เราจะต้องเป็นเพื่อนกับคริสนาและก็เป็นเพื่อนกับสาวกของพระองค์ด้วยเช่นกัน So Prabhupada said at this time there are many interpretations and translations of the Bhagavad Gita แต่เสวะวันก็บอกว่ามีคนให้คำแปลและคำอธิบายกับพระกวัตคิตาเนี่ยเยอะแยะมากมาย And these people They don't know anything about the real message of the Bhagavad Gita. They don't understand the position of Lord Krishna. But they will explain the Bhagavad Gita in their own way. And they will just give all kinds of rubbish interpretations of the Bhagavad Gita. So these people, they don't believe in Lord Krishna, and they don't believe in His eternal abode in the spiritual world either. So how can they explain this? They can because they don't believe in Krishna and they don't believe in the spiritual world. How can they ever understand the Bhagavad Gita? Krishna says, people who have they don't have proper sense. They've lost their good good sense. Then they worship the demigods to get material results. Because they have they have material desires, so they worship the demigods. And the result of worshiping demigods is you get things which are material and temporary. So Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, however, that we should surrender unto Him. 
and we should give, all, give up all the other wet processes and just worship Him. But in order to surrender to Krishna, we have to get free of all sinful reactions. And then we will have proper faith in the Supreme Lord Krishna. Other people, they, they haven't fully surrendered to Krishna, they will stay on the material path. And they will never find out what is the real path. They will never find out the real goal of life. And they think, oh, it doesn't matter, it's all one, it's all the same. And they think all the gods are one, all the gods are the same, all the gods are one, so it doesn't matter who you worship. So, so in this way, people never get the real goal of life, they stay in the material world. So in this mantra, mantra we're on mantra 13, the Ishopanishad says, he uses the word sambhavat. Sambhavat means by worship of the Supreme Cause. So Lord Krishna is the original personality of Godhead. And everything comes from Him. And this is said in the Bhagavad Gita, in the 10th chapter. Krishna says, Aham sarvasya prabhavo mata sarvam pravartate iti madva bhajante mam bhuta bhava samanvita. Krishna is saying that I am the source of all spiritual and material worlds. Everything emanates from me. The wise who perfectly know this engage in my devotional service and worship me with all their hearts. So we should understand everything comes from Krishna, everything material and spiritual, it all comes from Krishna. So this is a, a Krishna himself, is Krishna is describing himself in the Bhagavad Gita. Krishna says, Aham Sarvashya Prabhavo. Sarvashya Prabhava means that Krishna is the creator of everyone, including Brahma and Vishnu and Shiva. Uh, 
So Brahma, Vishnu and Shiva, these are the three principal deities in the material world. But they also come from Krishna. They have their origin in Krishna. Krishna, Krishna creates everything, everyone and everything, all come from Krishna. And this is stated also in other places. Here's a verse, there's another verse from the Atharva Veda, from the Gopal Tapani Upanishad. So there it says that he who existed before the creation of Brahma and who enlightened Brahma with Vedic knowledge is Lord Sri Krishna. And then there's another statement from the Narayana Upanishad. And there it said the Supreme Person Narayan desired to create all living beings. So from Narayan, Brahma was born. And, and Narayan created all the Prajapatis. And Narayan created Indra. And Narayan created the eight Vasus. And Narayan, Narayan created the eleven Rudras. And Narayan created the twelve Adityas. And that Narayan, he's an expansion, he's, a, he's a for, a, an expansion from Lord Krishna. So Narayan and Krishna are one and the same. And there's another quote in the Narayana Upanishad. It says, Devaki's son, Krishna, is the Supreme Lord. So Lord Narayan is the Supreme Cause, is also accepted by great Acharyas, like even Shankaracharya accepts that Narayan is the cause of everything. Even though Shankaracharya, he's not a Vaishnava, he's not a, really a devotee, but he said also that Narayan is the cause of the whole material world. Uh, and there is another quote from the Atharva Veda, Maha Upanishad, where it says, only Narayan existed in the beginning. So in the beginning, there was no Brahma, there was no Shiva, there was no fire, no water, no stars, no sun, no moon. Nothing was there. 
แต่ในตอนเริ่มแรกเนี่ยก่อนที่จะมีพระพรหมพระศิวะไฟน้ำดวงดาวดวงอาทิตย์หรือดวงจันทร์เนี่ยพระองค์ But the Lord does not remain alone. He can create as He likes. And there's another quote from the Moksha Dharma, where Krishna says, "I created the Prajapatis and the Rudras." And Krishna said, "They do not have complete knowledge of me, because they are covered by my illusory energy." And then it's also said in the Varaha Purana, Narayan is the supreme personality of Godhead. And from Narayan comes Brahma, the four-headed Brahma. And then also from Brahma, then we get Rudra. So all the Vedic literatures, all these different scriptures, they're all saying Narayan or Krishna is the original cause of everything. And in the Brahma Samhita also, it says that the Supreme Lord is Lord Krishna Govinda. And it's Govinda who gives pleasure to all, everyone. And he is the cause of all causes. So there's a lot of evidence given by great sages and by the Vedas to establish the position of Lord Krishna. So based on all this information from the scriptures, then the intelligent people will worship Krishna as the supreme Lord. And they won't worship anybody else. They will only worship Krishna. So the person who does that, then he is actually educated. He's really learned. So when we understand that Krishna is supreme, then. That means we've properly understood the message of the Acharya. We have to hear the message from the Acharyas with proper faith and love. If if we don't have faith or love for Krishna, then we'll never understand Krishna's position. Uh, 
In the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna describes people who have no faith. He said they're foolish people. They're described to be like donkeys or mudhas. So these mudhas, these foolish people, they do not understand Krishna's position. They did not properly hear from the qualified person. If you if we hear from somebody who is influenced by the material energy, then it won't have the proper effect. We have to hear from somebody who is actually qualified to become an Acharya. Before hearing the Bhagavad Gita, Arjuna was also disturbed by the material energy. Arjuna was very attached to his family and his society and his community. So Arjuna, he, he didn't want to fight. He didn't want to be a violent person. He wanted to just do work for the benefit of the society, just to help people. He didn't want to do violence. But when he became, when he became Buddha, when he became intelligent, when he heard the proper knowledge from the Bhagavad Gita, then he understood what he had to do. Yeah, Krishna heard the Bhagavad Gita from Lord Krishna and Lord, Ch Lord Krishna changed his mind because Lord Krishna was teaching him the Bhagavad Gita. So Arjuna surrendered to Krishna and he worshipped Krishna. And Krishna had arranged the battle of Kurukshetra. So Arjuna worshipped Krishna by fighting against his relatives. So this way he became a pure devotee of Krishna. So when we worship Krishna, then you get the proper result. But you have to worship the real Krishna. You cannot just make up your own Krishna. Some people make up their own, they have their own ideas about Krishna. Some people make up their own ideas about Krishna. 
idea kung how ay give Krishna. And they, they don't understand the Bhagavad Gita, they don't understand any scriptures like Srimad Bhagavatam. They cannot understand. So these foolish people, they cannot understand Krishna. So then Prabhupada says, according to the Vedanta Sutra, Sambhuta is the source of birth and maintenance. And after annihilation, everything, whatever remains, that is, there's just, that, that is also some Buddha. So Srimad Bhagavatam is the commentary on the Vedanta Sutra. So the Srimad Bhagavatam is also written by the same person who wrote Vedanta Sutra. They're both written by Srila Vyasa Dev. So in both these scriptures it says the source of everything is fully conscious. Yeah, the, the, we cannot think that everything comes from just a dead stone. So, Lord Krishna is the, the source of everything. Everything comes from Him. And Lord Krishna, in the seventh chapter of Bhagavad Gita, He knows everything, past, present and future. But great demigods like Shiva and Brahma, they don't know him. They know him a bit, but they don't know him fully. And these so-called spiritual teachers who are only half educated, they also don't know him at all, hardly. They, they are, these people are easily disturbed by the material energy. So they try to make some adjustments to help people, they try to change things to make it easy for people to worship. And they say we should worship the people. They say just worship the people. Don't worship God, we'll just worship the people. But that kind of worship, that is just, it's not real, it's nonsense. It's nowhere in the scriptures. Mm. 
Because you worship the ordinary people, the ordinary people are all imperfect. And so you worship the imperfect people, you, you don't get any benefit. But we get spiritual leaders, so-called people who are supposed to be spiritual leaders, they would say, just worship the people. So this is like, just like if you pour water on the leaf of a tree instead of the root. And so the, the, the leaves will just fall off. There will be no benefit to the tree to pour the water on the leaves. We have to put the water onto the root, and then from the root, all the leaves and branches will get nourished. But these, these, these foolish people, they will say, oh, no, no, just pour the water on the leaf. They're more attracted to the leaves. They don't want to take care of the root. So if they keep watering the leaves, what will happen? The tree will just dry up, it will die, and all the leaves will fall off. But if we worship, if we worship the, the Supreme Lord, if we worship the root, then the tree will grow nicely and all the leaves and branches will be nourished by the root. So the Sri Upanishad tells us, pour the water on the root. But if people wish, if people just do uh, if they just do humanitarian work, they do things like uh, serve the poor people, and they they will give service to all the, the the people's bodies. It will never help to improve the world. They're simply taking, they take care of the body and they want to help people's bodies, they do nothing for their soul. So it's the soul that actually gives all the, that allows the bodies to, to be properly nourished. So, you know, some people, they will help human, they will help the people by giving medical aid, or they will give educational facilities or social help. But at the same time, they do things like killing the animals. They have slaughterhouses to kill all the animals. So that doesn't do any good for people. We should understand people are suffering in different kinds of bodies. 
เราจะต้องเข้าใจก่อนนะผู้คนเนี่ยได้รับความทุกข์ทรมาน We're all we're suffering birth, old age, disease, and death. So the human form of life is a chance to get out of this material world. We have to ask, we have to discover our relationship with the Supreme Lord. And Krishna comes himself just to teach this philosophy to surrender to him. So if we want to serve the people, we should serve them by teaching them how to surrender and how to worship Lord Krishna, the Supreme Lord. This is the real point of worship in the Ishopanishad in this mantra. So it's very simple to worship the Supreme Lord in this age. We just have to chant about his activities. But the impersonalists, the 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 the, the men, these people, mental speculators, they think that Krishna's activities are just imaginary. And they they won't they they refuse to hear about Krishna. And instead, they will invent their own words and they will juggle words and they'll try to attract the attention of the innocent people. They don't want to hear about the activities of Krishna. But they will advertise themselves and they will they will get they will get their followers to sing about them. So this is going on, this is becoming more and more common in the Kali Yuga. So it's become a problem for the pure devotees of Krishna, how to save the people. How to protect people from all these bogus teachers, all these bad teachers. So the Upanishad tells us we should understand the importance of Lord Krishna and the Bhagavad Gita. We should hear about Krishna from the Bhagavad Gita. Here is teachings, Krishna's teachings in the Bhagavad Gita, and hear about Krishna in the Srimad Bhagavatam. Just by hearing about Krishna from the Srimad Bhagavatam, our mind will be purified. And 
and we will also attract the attention of Krishna. So Krishna is in the heart of every living being. And Krishna helps everyone, gives them proper direction. Krishna says that I give the understanding by which they can come to me. So from Krishna's we get the Krishna's direction from in the heart, Krishna directs us. But in order in order to get direction from Krishna, we have to get rid of all the influence of passion and ignorance. People who are not devotees, they are controlled by passion and ignorance. So if we are very passionate, then we won't, we'll be very attached to material things. And if we're in ignorance, then we, we won't know even who we are or who, who what is Krishna. So we can never become self-realized so long as we're in passion and ignorance. But, but if we are devotees, then Krishna himself will take away all the passion and ignorance. And the devotee will come to the mode of goodness. He'll be the, a brahmana. Anybody can become a brahmana if he does devotional service. We just have to be guided by the bona fide teacher, the, the, the spiritual master. Any person, doesn't matter what race or what community he comes from, he can be purified by the guidance of the pure devotee of the Lord. So when we get, when we become on the mode of goodness, when we have these Brahminical qualifications, then we'll be happy, we'll be joyful. And we'll be very enthusiastic to serve Krishna. We, the, we'll understand the science of Krishna just by getting free from our material attachments. And our mind will become clear by the grace of Krishna. So this is a liberated soul. Can see Krishna in every step of life. And this is a perfection of sambhava. 
described in this mantra. All right, so this is that mantra. Are there any questions? Okay. Got two questions. Okay. 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 You, you, Mataji. You, Mataji. Okay. You, Mataji. Okay. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Sila Pakupat. Uh, the question is, um, there is a, a well-known statement that the uh, spiritual minister is always with us. How can we understand it uh, correctly and without excessive sentimentality? What is always with us? What is this statement? Uh, the spiritual master is always with us. And how can we understand it correctly and without uh, excessive sentimentality? Yes, we say the spiritual master lives forever by his divine instructions and the follower lives with him. So we say two ways to associate with the spiritual master. One is by Bapu and the other is by Vani. The one is by the physical presence and the other is by his instruction. Now, the body of the spiritual master, physical presence, that is not eternal, that is temporary. But the instructions, that can be forever. So we want to associate with the spiritual master by his instructions. We want to meditate on the instructions of the spiritual master and make them part of our life. Srila Prabhupada saw, he said there were many people who used to be always with his Guru Maharaj, Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Prabhupada. There were many people around him. But he said after he departed, they did not follow his instructions. <laughs> So he, Prabhupada said, just like sometimes you see a mosquito is very close to the body of the devotee, but the mosquito has just come to bite and suck the blood. It's just come to give trouble to the devotee doesn't take advantage from the physical association of the devotee. 
จะได้มาคบหาเวลากันยุงได้มาคบหาสมาคมกับสาวไกลๆเนี่ยมันไม่ได้มีประโยชน์อะไรสิ่งที่เขาได้เนี่ยก็คือเขาจะไปกัดนะเอาเลือดของสาวออกไปแค่นั้นเองเขาเขาจะไม่ได้ประโยชน์อะไรจากการที่เขาได้มาเจออะไร So we have to understand how to properly associate with the spiritual master. It's not physical presence. It's not just only by being near to him physically. Prabhupada said he only associated with his spiritual master four or five times. He was initiated in 1933. And his spiritual master left the body in 1936, so there was not much time for him to associate. But he said, I never forgot his instructions. He said that he was always by my side, leading me. So if you follow the instructions of the spiritual master, he's, he's with you. Now that instruction, it may not have to come directly, it's not that the spiritual master has to tell you to do this, but you may get the instruction, it may come through reading the book of the teacher, or it may come through the inspiration from the heart, or it may be an instruction he gave another devotee, then maybe you want to take up that instruction. It can be like that. Yeah, Prabhupada doesn't, it's not that you have to be personally told to do everything. We should understand what is the desire of the spiritual master. Just like Srila Prabhupada wrote to his spiritual master asking him for instruction, how he could serve him. He said, you know, I'm a householder and I haven't done much service for you because I had my family. So I saw all the sannyasis serving you. So he wrote to his guru and he asked him, how can I serve you? So then the spiritual master wrote to him, he told him, he said, you're very good in English, so he said, you can use your English for preaching. So his Guru Maharaj didn't personally tell him, you should go to America, you should go to you. He just told him, he said, you're good in English, you can use that for preaching. 
ะพระอาจารย์ไม่ได้บอกว่าเธอต้องไปอเมริกาเธอต้องไปที่เมืองนี้เธอต้องแต่แค่แต่ท่านแค่บอกว่าเธอเนี่ยควรที่จะใช้ทักษะภาษาอังกฤษของเธอในการเผยแพร่ So then, in 1944, Srila Prabhupada began Back to Godhead magazine. And it was a very simple paper, which he was printing with some articles. But he understood. His spiritual master liked this. He liked to see something printed. He liked to see books printed. And then, and then Prabhupada considered how his Guru Maharaj wanted people to go out of India to preach. So, so Prabhupada went himself. He got he got the opportunity himself to go to America. So you have to be very sincere, and you have to pray to Krishna about how to follow the order of your spiritual teacher. So you read, you read Prabhupada's books and you'll be inspired, you'll get inspiration how to properly serve Krishna and Guru. All right. Any other question? Yes, Gomez. Next question by Bhakta Kitikon. Oh, really? Hare Krishna, Kulu Maharaj, Dandavat Panam. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Shila Prabhupada. Hare Krishna, Kap Mataji. Hare Krishna, Kha. ผมมีข้อสงสัยเกี่ยวกับฮาราตินีชักติครับถึงฮาราตินีชักติความสัมพันธ์ของพลังอำนาจนี้กับองค์พระคาวานและปรากฏการณ์ในจักรวาลนะครับพระดินีชักติใช่ไหมคะครับโอเค his question is Guru Maharaj about พระดินีชักติ No, it's Ladini Shakti. Ah, oh, Ladini Shakti, is it? Yeah, he's he's saying Ladini Shakti. You're saying oh. something else. Okay, my hearing. Okay, good one. So, how is it connected to Krishna, and how is it connected to the creation? Well, the Ladini Shakti. Is Krishna's pleasure potency? Krishna likes to enjoy, and he gets his enjoyment through the Ladini Shakti. Ladini Shakti ก็คือเป็นพลังงานเบื้องสูงของ Krishna นั่นเองที่เป็นพลังงานแห่งความสุขของ Krishna คือคือ Krishna อยากจะมีความสุขเนี่ยพลังงานเป็นพลังงานนี้เนี่ยคือเป็นพลังงานที่ให้ความสุขกับ Krishna. Krishna is the supreme. Enjoyer, he's the reservoir of all pleasure, and he likes to enjoy, and he enjoys it to an extent greater than we can even begin to imagine. Now, Prong, yeah, ก็ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ชอบเรื่นเริงกับความสุขหมายถึงท่านแบบว่าในระดับแห่งการที่ท่านจะสนองความสุขเนี่ยซึ่งมันมากหรือมันเหนือไปกว่าการที่เราจะสามารถจินตนาการได้ So the Latini Shakti is personified by Sri Mati Radharani. Latini Shakti ก็คือผู้ที่เป็นรูปลักษณ์ของ Latini Shakti ก็คือ Sri Mati Radharani. Radharani, she gives the greatest pleasure to Krishna. เพราะว่า Radharani เนี่ยทรงให้ความสุขเกษมสำราญกับ Krishna ได้มากที่สุด
So Ladini Shakti is there in the spiritual world. Ladini Shakti na mi yu thi lok thip. The Ladini Shakti is Krishna's energy. Krishna is energetic, and his energy and energetic, they're they're one. They're together. So when, we, so when we chant the names of the Lord, we don't just chant Krishna, we chant Hare Krishna. Hare represents Srimati Radharani. There's no difference between Radha Krishna and Hare Krishna. And we don't just worship Krishna alone, but we worship Krishna with his pleasure potency, the Lantini Shakti, personified by Srimati Radharani. Okay, so that's Ladini Shakti. When you do devotional service and you experience pleasure, that pleasure is coming from the Ladini Shakti. So devotees, we will approach Krishna through the Ladini Shakti. We want to please Krishna, we want to approach Krishna, we, we, go, we have to go. We don't go to him directly, but we go through Radharani. And if Radharani will introduce us, to Krishna, then Krishna will accept us. So the spiritual master is like a servant of Radharani. So you want to get Please Krishna, you have to please the spiritual master. By pleasing the spiritual master, then you'll get the mercy of Krishna. Okay. Thank you, Guru Maharaj for your best expense and direction. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Okay, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Please accept my humble obeisances according to Siddha Prabhupada. My question is related from Bhakta uh, Kitikon. So I need you to explain more about um, Shakti energy of Krishna, such as Sandini Shakti and Samavit Shakti, Guru Maharaj. Yes, well, these are the potencies in the spiritual world. There's the Samvit, the Sandini, and the Ladini Shakti. Three spiritual potencies in the spiritual world. Sandini, Ladini, and Ladini, and Samvit, 
is the knowledge potency. So the knowledge potency by which we can understand Krishna and we can serve Krishna, some of it. And the Sandini potency is the existence potency by which the whole spiritual sky is maintained, all the spiritual planets and all everything in the spiritual world, it's all maintained by the Sandini Shakti. And the Latini potency is the bliss potency by which everyone is very happy, very blissful. So the body, everybody's body in the spiritual world is eternal, full of bliss and knowledge because of these three potencies. Okay, so this is in the spiritual world, these three potencies are there. Um, Guru Maharaj, um, I heard um, from one devotee about um, Sandini Shakti is um, energy of Balaram uh, and um, Samavi Shakti is um, energy knowledge from Vasudev. All, all of um, three Shakti is Radharani. Can you explain more about that? Well, I told you Ladini Shakti is personified by Radharani. Mm -hmm. I've never heard the other things, what you say. Okay, because I confused about that, Guru Maharaj. Mm -hmm. And it means um, all of, uh, I mean, three of Shakti is come from Radharani or not? No. Ladini Shakti is Radharani. Ladini Shakti is Radharani. She personifies, mm. she's the personification of Ladini Shakti. Uh, and how can we understand that? Because Shakti is mean um, woman, right? And how I... I Shakti means, Shakti means energy, energy. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay, so it's not just, yeah, so it's not just woman, but it's energy, uh, power. Uh, okay, Kumarash. The followers of Lord Shiva, they're all Shakti, they worship the Shakti. They're all Shivites. The Shivites are Shaktis. The followers of Ganesh, they're Shakti. Wherever you see that tree shoe, you know that tree shoe? You know the three fork, the three pork, three pronged fork? Um, uh, so that is Shakti. That is indicate their Shakti mark. They follow they're worshipping Shakti, power. They don't worship, you see, we worship the source of the Shakti. Where does, we worship the Shakti man. Where does the Shakti come from? They worship the Shakti itself. We worship the source of the Shakti. พลังก็แล้วก็ผู้คนส่วนใหญ่ในโลกเนี่ยที่บูชาเราเทพอะไรเขาก็จะบูชาถึงพลังแต่ว่าที่เราบูชาคือเราบูชาแหล่งกําเ
Lord Krishna, Lord Vishnu, he is the source of the Shakti. Narayan, he is the Shakti man, the energy comes from him. There are many different Shaktis. And they all come from Lord Krishna. Right, we were hearing. In the beginning, there was only Narayan or Krishna. There was no Brahma, there was no Shiva, nothing was there. No sun, no moon, only Krishna and Vishnu. เราทราบที่เราได้ยินไปแล้วตอนแรกคือก่อนการสร้างปรากฏการณ์ทุกอย่างคือไม่มีอะไรอยู่เลยนอกจากนารายแล้วจากพระนารายองค์เดียวเท